Wearable rings like these with wooden or acrylic exteriors and metal or ceramic interiors make beautiful one-of-a-kind gifts. And they're fun to turn on a lathe if you're a wood turner with a moderate to high level of experience. These rings really aren't easy beginner projects. In the December 2022 issue of Woodworker's Journal, I've written an article about it that walks you through the ring turning process step by step. And you can watch Rockler's informative video about it by going to the link below. But there's one step to the ring turning process that I found particularly difficult, and it's this. Enlarging this inside hole in the acrylic or wooden ring blank to fit the metal or ceramic ring core. Here's why. Because these holes are so small, it's hard to fit carbide insert turning tools inside the opening without the shaft of the tool interfering with the rim of the drilled hole. And regardless of the tool, you have to be really careful to keep the cutter going straight into the blank. Otherwise, if you happen to turn the handle of the tool slightly one way or the other when you're reaming out this hole, you'll end up creating a cone-shaped hole that's wider at the opening or the back. And it's hard to tell when that's happening because the tolerance between straight walls of the hole and cone-shaped is so small. And a cone-shaped hole won't allow the ring core to fit the ring blank properly. You'll end up with a gap on one side of the ring or the other that won't look good or create a strong glue bond. But I've got a solution. I came up with this simple, inexpensive jig for my lathe that helps me ream these holes more accurately. It's just a piece of scrap plywood with a groove on the bottom that fits over the top of my tool rest bar. And there's a shallow dado on top that's perpendicular to the long edges of the jig that fits this narrow scraper I had on hand. This carriage bolt stands on top of my lathe's banjo and acts like a leg to stabilize the jig. It also tips the jig's platform about five degrees down from level. Now this scraper that I use for the jig is just a parting tool that I happen to have on hand that used to look like this. I ground off the pointed tip so it was square, and then I ground the end of the tool to about a quarter of an inch long. I also ground the narrow end and a portion of the left edge of the scraper to 15 degrees to create two cutting edges on the end and on the left side. In addition to the jig's platform tipping down by five degrees, I also adjusted my tool rest so the cutting edges of the scraper would be entering the hole in the ring blank slightly below the lathe's axis of rotation. And I used a thin steel rule as a spacer to adjust the front edge of the jig's platform parallel to the face of the ring blank. Doing that ensured that the dado for the scraper on top would be parallel to the walls of the hole already drilled into the ring blank. For me, this jig solves two big problems. First, the dado on top enables the scraper to be fed straight into the ring blank without creating a cone-shaped hole. And second, because this jig just sits on the tool rest, you can slide it laterally, even in tiny amounts. And that's important because you want to ream the hole on the inside of this ring blank larger in very tiny increments until it just fits this ring core. Now, here's how I use the jig. With my scraper on the jig, I shifted the jig's platform left until the scraper's left edge overlapped the left rim of the drilled hole by about 3 seconds of an inch. Then, with my left hand holding the jig in place and down against the tool rest, I slowly fed the scraper into the ring blank with my right hand. I made sure the scraper remained securely held against the jig during cutting. I stopped pressing the scraper forward when it began to cut into the waste block behind the ring blank. Then I'd pull the jig off the tool rest so I could check the new hole size against a caliper set to the outside diameter of my ring core. And if the hole was still too small, I'd shift the jig over a bit and repeat the scraping process. I did this as many times as I needed to until the ring core would slide all the way into the ring blank hole. The key to this process working well is to scrape a little off and check the hole size. Scrape a little more off and check the hole size again and be patient. The tolerance is really important and you don't want a sloppy fit. I hope this little jig helps your ring turning efforts. They may be a little tricky to make, but if you work carefully, you'll create rings that someone will be proud to wear and you'll have a great time doing it. 
I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine in Rockler, and thanks for watching.